Hey everybody, it's Tom Cherry Holmes with the next video in the Amiga Pac-Man series here, and we're going to take the very first steps in doing the sound output for Pac-Man. In order to do this, what we really need to do is we need to make something that acts like the Namco Wavetable Sound Generator, which was a very simple wavetable chip that was uh, used in all of Namco's early arcade games, Pac-Man all the way up through Xevious and Super Pac-Man and so on and so on and so on. It's a simple 4-bit wavetable generator with eight waveforms stuffed inside of it, which we can take and actually read out because they're on an EEPROM. Okay, so the first step here is basically to take and pull the data out of that EEPROM and get it into something that we can use. So what we do is we'll go ahead and I will open up just so you can see what the waveforms look like. We'll open up a copy of Audacity here. And we will go in and import a raw file and over here in temp, way over here in temp, we have our little EEPROMs right here. One of those EEPROMs, looking for it, looking for the 512, here we go. There we go. We open this up, we can read it as raw data, and we're gonna try to read it as signed 8-bit PCM, with a single byte um, with, a, with no Indianness. But if we want it signed, and we want to read it at approximately 8,000 hertz, it really doesn't matter because we really just want to get the data out. Now you'll notice that right here, as we do this, you'll see that the sound's very quiet. And recall, of course, that uh, I mentioned that this was uh, four bits worth of data. So we have to normalize this so that it can play within an 8-bit space. Otherwise, it's really quiet. See it right here. And again, it's very fast. It's very quiet, very fast. So if we take and set a loop point, let's say you know, something like that, you can start to hear the sound. But it's very, very quiet. So let's go ahead. And what we need to do as least, at least as far as processing this, we need to take and normalize it so that it can fit within the, uh, within the total dynamic space that we have for eight bits. Select everything. We'll take and just do this for visualization purposes and then normalize to zero dB, apply. And here are our waveforms right here. You can hear it's a bit louder and a bit more full form, but you'll notice just how, uh, just how unbelievably coarse these are. But that's part of the nature of the sound chip. You can see a sine wave right here. You can see uh, what's basically a double sine wave right here. Uh, different harmonics, different variations. You've got sweeps. And over here, you've got a triangle and a sawtooth wave to wind out the last two waveforms. We have eight waveforms in total. Now, each of these particular waveforms is 32 bytes in total. That is 32 individual samples that we have to take and pull out. And that's spread across eight of these sounds, which gives us a total of 256 bytes, which is the size of the prompt. Well, Turns out translating this is really easy. We'll go ahead and leave Audacity here and uh, we will go into, let's see here. Yes, I can show this on GitHub. Yes, all my code is here on GitHub. including previous projects like the mindset version of Pac-Man that this is based on. So, uh, yep. Let's go ahead, go into sound work, and we can see this little program that we've got right here. And this is really freaking simple. There's nothing to this thing. All we do is we open up the source file here, we split it out, and get 32, uh, 32 bytes of each, write the lots of little 32 bit, 32 byte files, and we do a little bit of a transform on them in that we convert them into signed 
uh, 8-bit audio by subtracting 128 from them and uh, doing a shift for, uh, 4 so that we can turn this from 4-bit samples into 8-bit samples. Very brute force, but it works. So when we do that, we wind up with a whole bunch of these files right here. We go ahead, workspace, background, and work. And we'll go ahead and build this real quick. Boom, okay. And the source file right here, and we wind up with our eight. 32 byte files here, each of these containing a single cycle of a particular WSG waveform. And with the added bonus that when we take and load this back in, it will automatically be in the correct format. So let's go ahead and try that now, just to be sure. Let's go ahead and import raw data. And I'm all the way back here. Space. Work. And we'll pull the first one here, which is our sine wave. We're going to take and open it up to signed 8 bit PCM. We're going to take and import this at 8,000 hertz. Sure, no problem. Default Indianness. And if we import it, there we go. We have the signal right there in its full glory with all the cycles intact. Bam. There we go. And because there are so few samples here in this file, Audacity has switched to using a lollipop graph here so that it can show each sample relative to the rest of them. So with that, we'll go ahead and close that just to show that there we can take and open up another one here, for example, to take and double check. We'll open up the very last one, which should be a sawtooth wave. Oops. <laughs> same thing, same thing, import. And we can see right here a nice discontinuous sawtooth wave ripping through the zero crossing at double cycle speed. Looking pretty good. Okay. So now that we have that, we can take that and we can uh, run XXD on each one of these to get an output set of data that can be embedded into a C program. Yay. Well, I've already done all of that. So let's go ahead and just delete all the test files because we don't want to have these hanging around in the GitHub repository. Uh, and if we take a good look, we can see I've got everything broken out into separate arrays, one for each of the eight possible waveforms in 8-bit form. Okay, great. We can take that. We can throw that on a floppy and move it over here to the Amiga. And once we're done, we wind up with, pardon me while I go into the workspace folder, go in Pac-Man, and there's another test here for WSG, just for my initial sanity checks. And if we look at waveforms.h, we'll find that it's right here waiting for us, ready to go. Beautiful, isn't it? So. Okay, we've got all our waveforms, all arranged, ready to go. As it turns out, we can basically just point the Amiga at them and play, uh, play them on a known cycle, and we'll be good to go. So, we have our wave table generator program here, which I adapted from my orchestra hit just really quickly. Nothing special here. Uh, a particular note here. As it happens, because of how these uh, how these particular samples are tuned, we're looking at uh, four bit samples uh, been shifted up to eight, uh, 32 samples uh, for a complete cycle. And if you do the quick math on that, it just so happens that two, the period size is 256 for a nice signal for a nice uh, sound at 440 hertz, no matter the waveform. They're all tuned to the same 
basic frequency. So with all that, we just set all that up and then we just cycle through. We can go ahead and we can cycle through all of these waveforms. Okay, great. And play them. We can make the result, give it a few moments to build. Doing good. We go ahead and atomize it to throw it in chip memory, make sure it loads into chip memory. And of the particular note, in this particular file, we actually come back to this real quick. I'm going to show you something. We have period size, but we also have set the number of cycles to 512 so that this particular waveform will loop back and forth, will loop 512 times so that we could hear it for more than a click's worth of time. So with that, linking is complete. We can now test it. And if everything works as it should, we should hear eight distinct timbres for roughly about eh, a second and some change, you know, a couple of seconds and some change, and all being played at 440 hertz, starting with a sine wave and ending with a double sawtooth wave. Okay, that might have echoed a bit. Let's see if let's try that again with my microphone off. <laughs> okay. And that worked. So I think this is a success. You know, we just take and march on. I think the next thing I'm going to take and show here is using the graphical element system for V sprites and try to use it for Pac Man and Ghost Movement. Until next time, guys. Have fun.